everyone. Welcome to day three of our live broadcast here Woo! at the PlayStation Exhibit Hall. Day three, we made it. Day three. We made it. Dude, I'm exhausted, but it is the best kind of exhausted. Yes, I'm starting to lose my voice, which means that the E3 is coming to an end. We just gave you guys a look at the sights and sounds of day two, which was jam-packed. Yes. We have so much more coming up for you today. So much more. Yeah, we've got uh, Doki Doki Universe. Yes. Counter Spy. Dragon's Crown, some Borderlands 2 DLC. Oh my gosh. Gonna uh, be great. We're gonna have Scott Rohde out here in just a yeah, moment. Yeah, I'm gonna take a chance to talk with Scott Rohde in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna a little Diablo later, some Octodad. That's gonna be so fun. It's a good day. Yeah. Good big day, day for E3. Yeah, so how was your how was your night last night? Uh, it was good. It was good. I uh, I appropriately went home at an early time mm -hmm. and got eight hours of sleep and yeah. woke up and had sure. a healthy breakfast. Sure you did. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Full great. of energy. Woo! We're gonna do it. <laughs> so tired, Meredith. So oh, it's so, it's so long. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, you, you had to party a little bit. I, my my oh, liver yeah. definitely, my liver definitely hurts. Is it on this side? I don't even know. Whatever, whatever, where, side whatever organ this is. <laughs> is that what hurts? Yeah. Where, what is that? Oh. I don't know. But it's so fun. That's, that's one of the great things about E3. There's always great parties going on yeah. every night, and then you get to actually hang out with all the people that you don't get to see during the day, because yes. it's just so crazy here on the floor. I ran into the, I ran into the super giant guys last night out and about, and just talk to them a little bit about Transistor, and they're going to be on later on today. Nice. Nicest guys. Uh, saw the. Dive Did they give me a copy of that song? Right. I love that song. Dude, the soundtrack is unbelievable, and they do so all good. that. That all that's original. They do all that music in house. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you run into anybody last night? I actually got to run into Mr. Brent Goki, and I went out for a couple of drinks. Everyone remembers Brent from The Tester. If you watch The Tester, which was the original reality series that I hosted for the PlayStation Network, mm. um, Brent was our was our PlayStation judge, okay. and so we got to go out last night and have a couple of drinks. And what, a like, couple more drinks. <laughs> and when you were out and about and you were talking to people, uh, what are people excited about? What are people? Oh my gosh! You know, a lot of people keep talking about the PS4. A lot of people are talking about how they really like the feel of the new controller. Yes. You know, anytime you change a controller, everyone kind of freaks out a little bit, and it's like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. But they really like the weight of it, um, the texture, like little things that you don't see in the photos, the tactile feel of it. Yeah. When really you when about. you look at it in the pictures, uh, you know, it, it looks very similar. To pass Dual Shocks, obviously yeah. it has a lot more going on in the middle. But when you actually hold it, uh, it's grippier on the bottom. Yeah, grippier. I like that word. Yeah, grippier. It's, it's grippier. It's got uh, the triggers. Yeah. Have a completely different feel to them. They have they have a little more give to them. Mm -hmm. um, the that, sticks are a little tighter too. Yes. Yeah. Which I love. I Touchpad that. feels great. Yeah. It's really awesome. I mean, that's the thing is like you see these things in pictures, but to be able to like actually put your hands on them, you're like, oh. This is a product that I'm going to be touching. Uh huh. It's good if I know how this feels. Yes. It feels really good. I know. And then we're going to touch. We're going to create some new PlayStation memories with our new controllers. Yep. And with all the excitement around PlayStation's fourth console generation set to launch this holiday season, we've all been sharing some of our favorite memories here at PlayStation. So yesterday, Taryn and Ray went out along the Los Angeles Convention Center to check out what you guys had to say. Here's a look at some more. We can all appreciate the nostalgia of getting our very first console, the plastic smell of a brand new game, the heartache of breaking it. Well, here at E3, we want to celebrate these memories and more in a little segment I like to call Favorite PlayStation Memory. We're talking favorite PlayStation memories, and these guys jumped at the opportunity. So I'm excited to hear what you've got from me. What's your favorite PlayStation memory? My favorite memory is Kingdom Hearts 1. Do you have a favorite PlayStation memory? GTA San Andreas. PS1, uh, Crash Bandicoot and all the Spyro game. Resident Evil 1. Definitely Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts, you know, that's the only game I think I've ever played where I wanted to cry at the end. And then just seeing Mickey, like, teamed up with, like, the main hero. Saving all the princesses. Come on, who wants not to love and it's Kingdom Hearts 3 coming out while I'm here? Well, I can tell you love it because this is this t-shirt's faded. Have you had this thing since you were, like, <laughs> Almost eight? Almost, like, no, two years. <laughs> two years I got this. I'm a Jet Moto guy. I remember when Jet Moto first came out. I was, I was playing that all the time. And Crash Bandicoot won. Gosh, this is dating us. My favorite PlayStation memory is opening my PS1 and playing the demo disc for the first time. Ooh, why? The demo disc, because uh, it introduced me to this game called Wipeout and uh, Futuristic Racing. And uh, I remember playing that demo over and over. It was the same track. I just kept playing it. You know, he literally has that soundtrack in his car right now. We were literally just listening to it right now. So he's not lying. He's, he's a Wipeout fanboy. All right, it's time to relive the nostalgia. What's your favorite PlayStation memory? Um, it would definitely have to be beating through God of War 1, 2, 3. That's amazing. That's a feat. Yeah, it, it took me a few, like, probably two months to beat all of them. And I just marathoned them as best as I could, and that was a lot of fun. That's really impressive. 
impressive. Is this your boyfriend? Yeah, it is. Does that just turn you on oh, even more? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> your girlfriend's awesome. <laughs> What's your favorite PlayStation memory? Um, I have a quite a few PlayStation memories. I mean, one of my favorite ones had to be when you guys put up all those slides saying not only do you support indies, but you support consumers and use games and all that. And that everyone was just cheering and like, yeah, not only is it like we're coming here to support a brand, but you guys are so obvious in supporting us. Uh, probably my favorite PlayStation memory overall, though, was uh, like in September of last year, we got an email from uh, one of, someone at Sony Corporate saying, congratulations, you guys are well, now PlayStation certified developers. Welcome okay. to the platform. Like we, my brother and I were running around the house screaming and like emailing everyone we can, screaming at the top of our lungs. Like, yeah. can I correct you? It's not welcome to the platform. It's welcome to the family. Oh hell yeah! Thanks, brother. Thanks, man. And no worries, man. All right, that was really cool. I love that part when the developer he just he just became a certified developer and he actually starts to tear up a little bit. Yeah, that was really awesome. Welcome to the family. All right, what's your favorite PlayStation memory? Oh my gosh, I remember actually the first time I played a PlayStation, I went over to my friend's house and sat down and he put in Ridge Racer. <laughs> and I started playing and I was like, oh, well this is gonna change everything. Now everything will be different forever. <laughs> I went home and I looked at my Genesis and I was like, you sit in the corner and think about <laughs> what you've done. You think it's, about this. You shamed it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? You know, I, I'm, I'm such a handheld gamer. When the Vita came out, I know it's such a recent memory, yeah. but that to me was, was so huge. I'm. You know, everyone plays games in their phone, but the touch screens on the Vita are like far surpass anything you can imagine. And I really, really enjoy my Vita. Another quick memory yeah. was like really awesome that happened last year. I was waiting in line for the God of War multiplayer. And I'm waiting in line, you know, like everybody else. I was done with my show and Todd Happy comes up to me himself and was like, Meredith, what are you doing waiting in line? Why don't you go upstairs? And handed me a wristband. And I was like, oh. What? <laughs> I can yeah. play the God of War. I can, I can actually do single play. <laughs> oh, it was awesome. And yeah. now that's coming out for the Vita. I know. See? All comes together. That's awesome. It comes back around. All right, now it literally takes an army to pull together this entire PlayStation exhibit hall experience. And the process to build this impressive showcase has actually been going on for weeks. This thing is insane. It is. It's if huge. We're here. I, you can't even, it's you can't so even imagine. The details and here are it takes, unbelievable. It takes hundreds of hours, but we don't have that kind of time. So we've compressed hundreds of hours into one minute. Take a look. Joining me now is Scott Rohde, who heads up PlayStation Worldwide Studios for America. Now, Scott, the booth this year is crazy impressive. Talk to me about some of the things that went into this. Oh, my gosh. It's just an unbelievable labor of love for the entire company. I mean, our guy Joby just spends the entire year reconstructing this booth and putting it together. I honestly think it's the best one we've ever had. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about the content <laughs> yet. It's good stuff. You know what's yeah. crazy? As a couple people came up to me and they were like, so you got a bigger booth this year, it's bigger. Yeah. And it's like, no, it's the same square footage. It's just a delay out. It feels so much more spacious. The, the way they have the line set up for all the games. Absolutely, and the stage is awesome. And yeah. the symbols down there with the LEDs, it's my favorite thing in the world right now. I love it. All right, now let's get yeah. started and talk about the content. Yeah. Now, Shu announced um, in February the four games that are going to be released to the PS4. But that is just a fraction of what Worldwide Studios is doing. What has everyone else been up to? Oh my goodness, you know I can't talk about all that okay. stuff, little, but little I can talk about the order that okay. we released, the order 1886, that's coming out already at dawn through yeah. Santa Monica Studios, a really great game based in a historical period in London that hasn't been touched very often. Yeah. That's a game where I think that the weapons are the stars. Mm -hmm. They took the technology of the age, saw what, kind of did a what if scenario right. to see what they could do. Really cool stuff. Yeah, it's like yeah. historical weapons meet Tesla coil meets kind of steampunk. Exactly. Yeah, it looks really cool. We actually were just running the trailer up there on the screen earlier and Very I was cool. like, 
getting distracted. Yeah. Yeah. So what makes uh, Ready at Dawn a really unique developer? You know, we've had a long partnership with Ready at Dawn. It's been really important to us. They've done a lot of great games back on the PSP. They did a couple of God of War games, Chains of Olympus and Ghosts of Sparta. They did the original Daxter game on PSP. <laughs> I mean, these are great games. And we just know how much talent they have. They're a special developer. And they came to us with this pitch, and we fell in love with it. We've been working with them ever since. Awesome. We're really excited about it. Do you see any emerging trends with the next generation console at the worldwide teams? You know what I love to say is that PlayStation isn't about trends, right? <laughs> it's about the actual opposite, right? So talking about the different types of games you're seeing, you saw it on the PS3, even in this late cycle, a game like, like Beyond Two yes. Souls that's coming out this late in the cycle, yes. that's a very unique kind of game. And it's not the kind of game that other publishers would take a risk on. It's what PlayStation does. So. I'm not going to talk about any All trends. Right. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. Now, you brought up the PS3. <laughs> All right, fine. Oh, we'll, we'll just have to wait. We'll have to wait until next year. OK. <laughs> you brought up the PS3. Now, yeah. when that first came out, I know that brought up a lot of challenges. What type of challenges are the dev teams facing with the new PS4 console? It's always a challenge when you transition to a new platform, mm -hmm. and especially when we have two vibrant platforms still going in the PS3 and the Vita. There's a lot of stuff to do. We have a lot of teams. We have a lot of great world-class teams. So there's so much. You know. I don't really think it's a problem for them. It's an exciting challenge. Yeah. So it's something we're all looking forward to. Very cool. Yeah. Now, on the PS3 front, The Last of Us comes to stores tomorrow. You know, I was talking with Ashley and Troy, the voice actors, last year at this time at E3. And now here we are, a full year later. It's coming out tomorrow. We know what the press thinks. What are you hearing on your side? What are the fans saying? It's, it is just a nonstop barrage of positive, right? So this is a game. Seeing this thing come together after, after three years, right, where the vision is in place, and actually seeing that team hit and even exceed that vision, mm -hmm. this game tells a story better than, quite frankly, any game I've ever seen tell a story in my entire career. This wow. game is, and I'm not just saying that, <laughs> right? This game is amazing. Did you play it yourself? Have you I have. It? Okay, so I've played it during the dev process, yeah. all in different chunks. I had to leave my house 60% through. Do you know how painful that is? Oh, but, but you, the you rest came of the world here. has. Exactly, I had to. I had to come to be with you on Mornings <laughs> with Meredith. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. <laughs> now, with the PS Vita, there is a ton of games in this booth. It looks like, you know, with Killzone Mercenary, the Vita's really hitting its stride. You know, I'm a big fan. Yes. Yeah. I'm a huge fan. I can't imagine going anywhere without my Vita. And what we've done over the last year or so, and this is not just first party. In fact, it's, it's, it's not first party at all in many cases. This is a huge third party effort. This is a huge global effort to bring all these great indie games to the platform. So you saw a lot of them on stage for the PS4, but a lot of those might make their way to Vita as well, right? So you're gonna see this proliferation of great new wild types of games yeah. on the Vita over the next couple of years, something we're really excited about. In addition to games like Mercenary yeah. and Tearaway. Yeah, I love Tearaway. I got I had a one hour break yesterday, and that was the first thing I did. I ran downstairs and I played the whole demo all the way through. Yeah. It was so charming. It's very and it was cool. funny, and I said that, and the people that were running the game were like, "That's I've never heard the word charming applied to a video game <laughs> so much. And tear away. But that's Media Molecule know, for you. I mean, they're hello. just they're just genius with that with that kind of stuff. They're yeah. really good. Yeah. Super great. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you so much for joining me today on Morning's Marathon. It's always great having you here. Great. We really enjoy it. Now, it's going to be a very busy day here at E3, so here's a look at what's on tap.
Again, lots on tap for our final day here at E3. Stay with us. We are going to be live all day long. We've got tons of demos, a lot more interviews, and we've got a live GT6 Academy contest that's going to be happening on our main stage at 11 o'clock. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on our final day of Mornings with Meredith. I love coming here every year for E3. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the lineup. I'll see you all later.